Former U.S. Head Advisor for Counterterrorism Richard A. Clark's book, Against All Enemies, 2004, derives its title from the oath of office taken by state officials to uphold the Constitution. The book primarily offers a critical analysis of presidential policies and their impact on the United States' proclaimed war on terrorism, particularly regarding the 2003 invasion of Iraq and the ongoing military presence. The central focus of the book's criticism lies on former President George W. Bush accusing him of failing to take necessary action to protect the nation before the calamitous September 11 terrorist attack in New York City. Furthermore, Clark condemns the motives behind the Iraq invasion, asserting that it worsened the political situation in the Middle East and hindered the United States' ability to engage with struggling states in the region. By challenging the notion that the U.S. government effectively fulfilled its collective oath to defend against all enemies, foreign and domestic, the book serves as a rebuttal. Clark begins the book amidst the domestic political turmoil in the years leading up to the September 11 attacks. He emphasizes his urgent and frequent appeals to the CIA and other intelligence agencies to devise a strategy for addressing the increasing signs of domestic and international terrorist activities within the U.S. One key point of evidence he highlights is his endeavor to persuade then-CIA Director George Tenet to incorporate specific information about al-Qaeda into daily intelligence briefings. These analyses revealed a significant amount of terrorist communication, indicated by the high volume of network activity involving individuals associated with al-Qaeda and its affiliates. Consequently, Clark suggests that the 9-11 tragedy might have been preventable if the intelligence community had heeded the numerous warnings. In the aftermath of 9-11, Clark argues that the U.S. government's response and subsequent actions were characterized by various shortcomings and failures. In a deliberate manner, certain leaders shaped a military response that served their political agendas rather than strategically addressing the complexities of actual terrorist threats. Richard A. Clark accuses Secretary of Defense Donald Rumsfeld of conducting airstrikes on Iraq despite a lack of evidence implicating the country solely because Iraq presented a higher number of identified threats that were easier to eliminate, generating an illusion of progress for media coverage. According to Clark, Rumsfeld prioritized manufacturing a sense of American optimism over defending against confirmed perpetrators of terrorism. To substantiate his argument, Clark presents various case studies of terrorist figures to illustrate that the true threat was primarily contained within Afghanistan, Iraq's neighboring country. After condemning the leaders of the intelligence community for their inaction, Clark reinforces his point by recounting an incident on September 12, 2001, when President Bush enlisted his help to gather evidence linking Saddam Hussein to the attacks. Clark claims that he became aware of systemic resistance to uncovering an accurate narrative of the events leading up to the attack when he submitted a report stating that there was no evidence whatsoever of Iraq's involvement. Despite obtaining the necessary signatures from relevant intelligence agencies, the report was summarily dismissed by the president's advisors without even being reviewed by Bush himself. Furthermore, Clark recalls a meeting with Deputy Secretary of Defense Paul Wolfowitz, who displayed skepticism regarding the idea that Osama bin Laden could have orchestrated the September 11 attacks without the support of Iraq, particularly Saddam Hussein. Clark alleges that Wolfowitz disregarded the evidence and instead embraced a discredited theory advocated by conspiracy theorist Lori Milroy, linking Hussein to the lesser bombing of the World Trade Center in 1993. Richard A. Clark's strongest criticism of the U.S. administration's actions during the war on terror lies in his overall assessment that there has been a lack of reasonable, strategic, and evidence-based efforts to combat radicalized terrorist groups in the Middle East. According to Clark, the 2003 invasion of Iraq actually bolstered Osama bin Laden's influence, providing validation to the notion that the U.S. intended to invade Iraq for the purpose of occupying and exploiting its oil reserves. As this narrative gained credibility, the number of new terrorist recruits soared. In his political expose, Clark concludes that the war has depleted resources from the more crucial battle of eradicating al-Qaeda which continues to strengthen both within and beyond Afghanistan. He argues that had his advice been heeded when urgently presented, Al-Qaeda could have been nearly eliminated by the time he wrote the book. Instead, he observes that Al-Qaeda has expanded its political and geographical reach while radicalizing other terrorist groups to a critical extent. 
Intended as a companion to his highly publicized testimony to the 9-11 Commission, Clark's book serves as a polarizing denunciation, supported in part by many of his political colleagues who were part of the U.S. government during the War on Terror. Clark's account aims to expose the U.S. for its ethical wrongdoing in deliberately using other political actors, sometimes innocent, as scapegoats to control the media narrative and distort the nation's history. I hope you enjoyed this video, leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe thank you.